Hello, my name is Colin, and welcome to my fourth video in my Abstra EVNG Lab series. In the last video, we onboarded our EOS server, and in this video, we're going to map out topology elements, specifically the IP space and network information that we'll need to deploy our fabric. We're also going to do some work on our VQFX that is unique to the VQFX platform so that it plays nice with the Abstra server. That is required learning for any of you building this lab, so definitely don't skip the second half of this video. And we'll start with this slide that I put together that I use to help visually contextualize the different elements of an Abstra Blueprint. An Abstra Blueprint is essentially a configured and operational fabric. There are different elements that you will define to help build the intent that drives that blueprint. And today we're going to be looking at resource pools, which would be the pools of information or buckets of information that we're going to tell Appster it can use to build the fabric overlay. If you watched the previous video, you'll know that I'm reusing the IP and VLAN and ASN information from my previous lab. And the reason I'm doing this primarily is because I spent a good deal of time building out DHCP assignments for all the lab elements, including the AOS server. And it is just a heck of a lot easier for me to reuse the MAC addresses from that other lab than it is to build a new lab and then go either statically assign IPs or do DHCP. Because we want to start with our resource pools and end in our VQFX, we'll look at this information first here at the bottom. ASNs out of the private IANA ASN space. I've got my loopback interfaces. This is a slash 24. Obviously, loopbacks will deploy as slash 32s but they will deploy out of this range. And this Fabric SuperNet, this is for the interface IPs for all the peering, both underlay and overlay. I've got similar information, obviously unique to the other data center, DC2 in this case. Looks the same, different octets, different ASN range. This external, obviously it's not gonna start, You know, the second octet's not gonna be a one or a two because we're already using that in the Fabric. Three and up from here uh, on this octet, that's gonna be used for interface IPs for appearing in the WAN and DCI. There's going to be a number of routers that are outside of the fabric, not managed by Abstra. We're obviously going to need to put IPs and such on those. Our initial build is focused on single tenant. We'll do multi-tenancy in the later videos. Uh, right now, it's just a matter of we want to just get the simplest fabric we can up and running. Single tenant, multiple subnets. I've got a VLAN ID and then a VXLAN network identifier, a VNI. You can see that I'm making them very similar. That's just for sanity's sake. I recommend you do the same. Don't. It's just a lot easier if you can look at a VNI and know what VLAN it is. Put it that way. And then I have a subnet. And you can see that that VLAN maps to that third octet in my subnet for that particular host network. I've got VLAN 101 and VLAN 102 in DC1, and I've got VLAN 101 and VLAN 103 in DC2, both in the same tenant or VRF. Let's get over to the management interfaces. These are the Macs that I'm going to reuse. I won't make you sit through all of that. I'll just build a node and watch, you can watch me do that. And then I'll pause or fast forward and then I'll build it all because there's 12 VQFX devices. I don't even have enough fingers for that. There's going to be six in each data center. This SID is where the VQFX fund starts. If you watched the first video, I talked a bit about why we aren't using ZTP. That's because you're never gonna use VQFX in a production environment. So Abstra isn't built to support some of the nuances of VQFX for ZTP. Those nuances are what we're going to be dealing with right now because there is some prep work we need to do on every single VQFX that we're gonna deploy and onboard uh, before it'll actually work with Abstra. Here are the two VQFXs that I have already spun up in this lab. The first thing to note is that VQFX is a bit of a unicorn in that it actually has a password from the factory. Not usually the case with Junos. Junos usually ships without a password and then on your you can't do a commit unless you define a root password. The password by default is Juniper with a capital J. This does break Abstra. Abstra is not expecting a password when it's onboarding a clean device, something that's, you know, in Juniper speak, zeroized. So we need to address that. The next big thing we've got to deal with is this SID, this system ID value. When you onboard a device into Abstra, 
that system ID value is what is used to uniquely identify that device. When you deploy VQFX, that, that value is the same on every single box. You can see it here at the bottom. And if I look at the other one, do a cat slash boot slash loader dot conf. It's the same. It's the same on both boxes. So we actually need to modify those. Now you can make it whatever you want as long as it's a hex value and you keep this VM in place. I like to map it to my MAC address. So I put this 39 here and I make this all zeros and put a 39 in the middle. That's kind of how I do it. You can do it however you want. For me, this is, this is what works. No matter what, that value does have to be unique because that is how Abstra is going to mark that device as unique. Now, mind you, when you onboard it, you're gonna give it a name. You're gonna know what it is because it's gonna say spine-1, right? You don't need to memorize the serial ID, but if they all match, it's gonna cause problems. And let's get out my cheat sheet because I do reference here that we're gonna need a bigger window. Well, that is true. We are. Here's my cheat sheet. Another interesting thing that VQFX does that is unique to VQFX is this connection between the RE and the PFE. It's EM1. This interface, I believe, exists on QFX, but it is not used to interconnect the RE and PFE with an IP address. If I go here and I do a show CLI, show configuration interfaces EM1, you'll see that this has an IP on it. If you delete and commit this you delete this interface and commit it, it will break the connection between the RE and the PFE. Even if you add it back in, I have very little luck getting that PFE to come back online. So do not delete this and commit it. You can delete it and then add it back in without, a, and then commit and you'll be fine. But if you commit this and that's not there, you commit a config with that not there, it'll cause all kinds of problems. And usually you just have to start from scratch again. So don't do that. And finally, another thing that'll drive you nuts if you've ever been on a VQFX is that it deploys by default channelized, which means that I, if I wanna look at all the interfaces, this is what I'm doing. You see I'm at 14, 15, 16%. I'm not even halfway through all the interfaces here. It's a mess. And while you're not gonna spend a lot of time in the CLI, you're gonna spend enough time here not to wanna to have to deal with this mess. So we're gonna clean that up as well and you're gonna to get to see how we can create a configuration without a password, which is pretty neat. And also something you can only do on the VQFX. So let's start with that system ID. Uh, we're in the CLI, we're only gonna do this on one box. Again, I'll spare you doing it on all of them. Uh, we'll use VI, we'll go to bootloader.conf. If you don't know VI, don't worry. There's not a lot we have to do here. Use your arrow keys to get to this letter V. Hit the letter X until you have the two quotes sitting right next to each other. Whenever I transition between commands, I hammer the escape key a couple times just to be safe. Not always required, but a great habit to get into. Now press the letter I one time. Type in V, M. Now four zeros, one, two, three, four. Your unique identifier, I'll just do 33, and then four more zeros. Done and done. Hit the escape key a few times, right, quit, bang, done. All right, so now if I cat the same file, we can see that that serial ID has been updated. All right, step one is done. Now, we're going to remove this default factory configuration. When we zeroize, this is what gets loaded. Normally, this is in protected memory. On the VQFS, this specific file is not. So what we're going to do is we're going to do rm etsy config vqfx. Done. Gone. Now, let's get into CLI. We'll get into configuration mode, and we're going to start by deleting 100% of our interfaces. Now, remember, we can do this as long as we don't commit with that EM1 interface gone. I'm gonna delete my system login, delete system login, and I'm gonna say delete system root authentication. I'm just going down the list right here. Now, rather than type the rest of this in, I am just going to copy and paste the set chassis. I don't need that. I don't know why that's there. Um, yeah, let's get rid of that. Bye-bye. Got a host name at the top. Uh, these are just default configuration elements that are in here. I am redefining all of the interfaces in the VQFX just so that they're nice and clean. I'm getting the management interface back into DHCP. Again, this configuration is in the default config. And then I'm adding back in the EM1. This configuration is identical on all VQFXs, so don't worry about that IP address needing to be different. Resetting the LDP because this is, you know, it's a discovery tool. We want that running. And then we save that configuration 
with the same file name that we deleted earlier to make it essentially the config that gets loaded when we zeroize. So I'll go ahead and grab this and paste it in. Yep, we'll wait for that and then we'll save it and then we'll drop out. We do not commit, we do not have to commit because what we're doing here is we're creating a new default configuration file. So we'll drop out and then we'll zeroize. So save slash etc, which will essentially load it. And that's how we get around the whole, I don't have a root authentication password set problem. qfx-10000-factory.conf, done. Exit, yes, leave without committed changes. Request system, zeroize. Now, I'm not gonna let, make you sit through this, but I will pause and I will show you what everything looks like when it comes back up from being zeroized. All right, we're back up. It didn't actually take all that long. Root. You'll note that I didn't have to put in a password, so we know that that worked. Good signs. Let's go ahead and cat that bootloader file just to make sure that our unique serial ID is still intact, and it is. Now if we do a show configuration interfaces, it should be a quick scroll through. Perfect. All right, this VQFX is now ready to onboard. My next step is to put the QFX elements into the lab. It's gonna look like this. So I need six for each data center for a total of 12. As I go along, I am going to be naming them as well. You can get those names right here. I'm gonna omit this leading one for data center one and the leading two for data center two. Actually, I see I didn't even put DC over here. I probably should do that. I'll update that. I'm just going to put in spine because it'll be pretty clear if they're in DC1 or DC2, so I don't need to make it too wordy. All right, I'm going to get cracking on that. I'll pause this and I'll build those out and then I'll come back when it's done and we'll connect the interfaces and that'll be the end of the video. For the sake of thoroughness, I am going to show you the first node that I spin up. It dawned on me that if you're using Eve for the first time and you're building this as your first Eve project, first, bravo, that's a pretty heavy lift. Second, you might not have gone through this process before. I'm going to pick the PFE and I need to do a PFE and an RE. Uh, I'm going to use the most current version that I have. If you've got multiple versions, then pick the one you want. I'm using 20.3 R1. If you have access to that, I recommend you do that as well. If not, you can use 18.4. I talked about versions in an earlier video. I'm going to take the VQFX off of this because I know that that is for VQFX. And the PFEs I just named generically. You can see that here, that all of them are named just PFE. So I'm gonna spin up 12 of these and just call them PFE. I don't need to mess around with the MAC address here. This will be generated if I don't define it, and I can always change it later, but since this is the PFE and not the RE, and the RE is where the management is, I don't need to modify this value. And in fact, I don't need to modify any of these other values. I just wanted to change this name and change this quantity. Done and done, I'll click Save and that will spawn 12 VQFXs in a very awkward to get to part of my screen. In no particular order, there are my PFEs, and I'll have to go in, it did still number them, so I'll still have to take those numbers out. Uh, and I'll create my 12 nodes now as well. And I, if I was doing these one-offs, I'm gonna do 12 right away and I'll give them names. Um, actually, I might just do these one at a time. So let's just do spine one. So I'll just call this spine one. And I do think it needs to be unique. So I guess in spite of what I said earlier, that way I don't have two REs named the same thing. I'll have DC one dash spine one. First ethernet MAC address, match that to this value over here. So that'd be 50 colon zero zero colon zero zero colon 39 zero zero zero. That's it. Save. DC spine. Okay, so that's how you do that. Now I'm gonna go through and do spine, <clears throat> spines and leaves. It's gonna look like this. So take a screenshot, pause if you need to, uh, and it's gonna be these devices here. One other thing, just in case I didn't make it clear, when you connect these together, EM1 to EM1. All right, now I'll be back. Here's the state we're in right now. I'm not gonna have any IP addresses because I haven't connected my devices to this lab net. So that'll be my next step. I'm gonna do that now. And once that is done, I'll show you some cleanup tasks and then we'll wrap the video. So in this case, we're just connecting everything to EM0. So this should go pretty quickly because you don't actually have to make any changes. 
management interfaces are connected. But as you can tell, this is pretty darn cluttered. What I did in my other environment, what I'm going to do here is change the coloring of the management interfaces, make them dashes so that they don't pop out as much and move the label for the links so that they don't interfere or overlap with the other elements in the lab. You can do this by clicking on each link, going to edit style. Here we have the option of changing the style from solid to dash, changing the color. In this case, I'll pick something that is in the red. You could even use like gray if you wanted to really make it disappear. I used red so it wouldn't overlap with the other links. I think that F FCC, that looks good. Let's go with that, perfect. Wash, rinse, and repeat for all the other links. And again, I'll be right back. Okay, that looks a lot better. Now we're going to do something similar with the EM1 interfaces that connect the REs to the PFEs. I hadn't done it before, but right now I'm gonna to try to get all of these devices kind of in a grid pattern so that they line up on the horizontal and the vertical. And once that's done, I will edit the links do the same type of thing where I do dash. Actually, the dash doesn't matter. You can leave it solid, but we do want to have a nice light color. I can just reuse the same one. And then I'm going to move the position of the labels so that they overlap each other, just like that. Perfect. All right, I'll go through all of those and come back and we'll check for management IP addresses, do our links, our fabric interconnect links, and then we'll call it a video and we'll move on to the next one. Time consuming, but worth the effort. Trust me, it's gonna get real crowded. There's a logic to the way that I interconnect everything in this lab. Again, I recommend you take a screenshot if you wanna replicate what I'm doing. You don't have to, but again, if you're doing this step by step, have a photo. The whole deployment is kind of focused on making sure that there's consistency between these labels. So if I'm on leaf one and I'm connecting up to spine one, I'm going to hit one. And we're just, we start at the leaf, the axis leaf, we work our way to the border leaf. But we can see here one and two goes to leaf, the spine one and spine two. Same over here. Same with the links back down. We switch to three and four on this side. Anyway, Easiest thing to do, take a screenshot, replicate it. I'll start putting these links in. And like I said, we'll go check our management IPs and call it a video, assuming everything looks okay. All done. All right, fingers crossed. But that's almost certainly not a lab problem and more of a home network problem. I just needed to renew DHCP leases. We are ready to onboard in the next video. Uh, I know this has been a long one, but the lift of VQFX, which again, you only have to do one time, is a bit extreme. Thanks. I'm going to try to knock out a couple more videos this week. I feel like I got some momentum, got some extra time, and I'm about to go on PTO, which means I'll have more time or less, depending on who you are in my household. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you in the next video.